Hello and welcome viewers. I am Savannah O'Leary. And I'm Ella Daniluk, and this is the first episode of TBD, a sketch comedy show that we put together. We hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Fraser O'Leary. You may know me as the host of our community's award-winning talk show, Good Morning Fort Hunt, and every other post that you read on Nextdoor.com. I was so proud to be selected to be the host of Fort Hunt's newest sketch comedy show, TBD. I'm told that it was a very stiff competition to select the first host. Uh, the candidates had to be community focused. They had to be extraordinarily witty and charming, and they had to give birth to and raise at least one of the show's co-producers. Oh, and they also had to be willing to bankroll, produce, and edit the entire production. So my condolences to Ella Danilux's parents, but there can be only one first host. Now, my daughter Savannah has given me strict instructions about what I can do in my monologue and specifically what I can't do. She said, no dad jokes, no inflammatory political commentary, and absolutely no nudity. But to paraphrase Ronald Reagan, I paid for this microphone, so I'm going to do what I want. So I'd like to start with my favorite Donald Trump and Joe Biden dad jokes. But before I do, why don't I just get myself a little bit more comfortable? All right, guys, good to see you all. We're going to give it another few minutes to see if more people log on. How are you doing today, Mr. Bernard? I'm doing very well, Amy. Thank you. Has anybody been doing anything interesting? I have, Mr. Bernard. I started my third classic today, and I'm learning violin. Wow, that's very impressive, Amy. Anyone else? Right. Well, hopefully you've all done the homework. Uh, the textbook pages that I assigned, they were supposed to be submitted on Google Classroom yesterday. Oh, shoot. Dude, Matt, can I see your homework real quick? I completely forgot about that. Huh? I can't give you... Jeff, all work is optional. If you didn't do it, that won't affect your grade. Oh, gotcha, Teach. Carry on. I'm so sorry for his disruption, Mr. Bernard. It's quite all right. Anyway, last week was our last unit, our last lesson of Unit 8, so we are entering our final unit. Even though this is the last unit, it's still very important. So have some paper ready. And what I'd ask oh. is that if everybody can... Oh, God, Matt, buddy, can I borrow a pencil? Sorry, bro, I'm such a mess today. Jeff, I can't give you Dude, anything. this is a video call. You can't pass you anything. Mr. Bernard, I'm so eager to learn. Please ignore my fellow classmates. It's all right. Let's just try to keep the talking to a minimum. If you have a question, just raise your hand. All right, so the key equation for this unit... Yes, Jeff? Yeah, sorry, Teach. Uh, can I use the bathroom? Jeff. Oh, right, 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 right. Sorry, may I... Jeff, you don't need to ask. You can just mute your microphone and leave and then come back, okay? Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Jeff. What up, Teach? Don't you need to use the bathroom? Yeah, but uh, I need a pass. Yes. Oh, for the love of God. Jeff, you're at home. I can't give you a pass. You have my permission. Ed, never mind. I don't want to miss any of the lesson. At this point, we're not even going to start the lesson, thanks to Jeff's indigenousness. That's a new word I learned in one of my many classics I've been reading, Mr. Bernard. Hey, that sounded like an insult. What's an indigenousness? It basically means lacking judgment. Amy, let's avoid those kinds of words. We shouldn't insult each other. Yeah. You know what, Amy? I'm sick of your crap. You've been a stuck-up know-it-all for this entire year, and you need to learn when to shut up. Yeah, you tell her, Luke. Hey, everybody, let's just settle down, okay? Oh, yeah? Well, you know what, Lucas? Fight me. Dude, don't hit a girl. He can't hit her. Jeff, it's a Zoom call. All right, listen, things are really getting out of hand. Just hold on a second. I'm going to have to remove uh, Lucas and Amy. Wow, class just flew by. I didn't even hear the bell.
You've watched Big Brother for the laugh, the drama, and the robot. And our 16 contestants have played by the rules. But there's one thing you haven't seen yet. After spending all season in the house with these guys, I'm so happy to finally have a chance to just go outside and get back to normal. It's been so hard without TV, phones, or like any contact with the outside world. I mean, what if I miss something important? Oh my god. I don't know who won The Bachelor. If Luke would have really asked Jojo to marry him, then you would have never known who was going to actually do it. Have you ever heard of COVID-19? Isn't that a band? I think I heard a song that said that once. <laughs> do you know anything about the coronavirus? Is that like when you get really sick after a party? Do I know her? Have you ever heard of the term social distancing? And if so, are you participating in it? I haven't heard of it before, but it sounds a lot like bullying. We don't stand. That's right. While you were at home social distancing and weighing the ethical pros and cons of getting coffee in the morning, these gorgeous dummies were busy pretending to tan and stabbing each other in the back for your entertainment. In tonight's special reunion episode, we catch up with our contestants after they've spent a week in their greatest challenge yet, a mid-pandemic America. Guys, hello! It's been so long since I've seen you all. Not long enough. Guys, guys, come on. Let's stay on task. The producers asked us to talk about our experience with Kimona, and that's what we're gonna do. Corona. <laughs> no thanks. I only drink crap. No, it's called Corona. It's actually called Blue Moon, but to each their own. Um, I'm Arson, and the only crime I've ever been convicted of is stealing the hearts of America. <laughs> anyway, uh, when we got out of the Big Brother house, I did think we missed the rapture, but I guess it's just a pandemic, so party. Okay, so the producer sent a list of questions. First one, what was the worst part of living in a pandemic? Definitely thinking I'm gonna get mugged every time I go for a walk. Like, why are they covering their faces? What are they hiding? Yeah, Georgie. What are you hiding? The fact that you never loved me? You're one to talk considering you were hiding a second girlfriend right under my nose. Shut up, Georgie. Guys! What? Stop it or they won't ask any of you back for All Stars. For me, personally, it's the arrows on the floor in grocery stores. I don't need arrows telling me how to walk. That's why I use Grubhub. I don't need to know my left and right to order in. Uh, Christy, you do realize that this season, it's not sponsored. I know, but apparently we're in like a refreshing. So I'm trying to get a job by showing them I can be a sponsor. Grubhub, it's an app. Well, for me, the worst part of it is having to cover up the bottom half of my face, which, by all accounts, is the better half of my face. So. For me, it's finding out that my grandmother went to the hospital because my little cousin Teddy coughed on her and that we have to say our final goodbyes over FaceTime and that she's on a waiting list for aspirin and she might not even get it! I just hate the fact that I can't even get a haircut, <laughs> like, hello! Oh my gosh, same the worst. <laughs> Big brother, we should have left them inside. Hi, I'm Francis O'Leary, the military governor of the Fort Hunt community. Since I won this title, fair and square, at Dan Stork's Celebrity Mahjong Tournament in 2015, I, like many of you, assumed that this was kind of a for-life position. Well, due to the efforts of some rabble-rousing nerds, it's been pointed out to me that the Royal Charter specifies that the military governor has to be re-elected every three years, or specifically, after every three bountiful tobacco harvests. 
If I'm being honest, if I had known that there was any amount of accountability in this position, I would have done things a little bit differently. Yes, my mandatory driver's education and road checkpoints for Maryland drivers was well received. But my effort to bring back the traditional right of military governors to seize property met with some unexpected resistance. That said, bygones. Okay? It's clean slate time. I think that my record over these past three years speaks for itself. We have gone 85,775 days without an Indian attack. Knock on wood. We have reduced the number of Maryland drivers on our roads by 23%. And we are draining the swamp of local government. Literally. That swamp right next to the government center, I was over there this morning draining it. So because I'm forced by law to stand for re-election, I'm here asking for your vote. Or actually, because of the wording of the Royal Charter, only descendants of high-born Scottish families are eligible to vote. So specifically, I'm asking for the vote of the O'Shaughnessy family on Wellington, the McDougall family on Riverside, and the Fernandez family on Fort Hunt Road. You guys matter to me. For the rest of you, my neighbors and subjects, here in the Fort Hunt community. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your irrelevant, if I get it or not, support. And God bless the Fort Hunt community. I am His Excellency Francis O'Leary, and I approve this message. All right. I want to start off by saying that it is an absolute honor to be meeting with all of you today. It is a privilege to be your choreographer, and together we are going to make Be Prepared the best number in the entire movie. Who's with me? Woo! Wonderful. So today's meeting is our brainstorming session. So I want everyone to just throw out any ideas they have, because who knows? It could be the idea that brings this number to its full potential, right? Fantastic. So my initial thought was to have St Scar start out quiet, possibly only talking to his henchmen, and then we build from there. Because if we start off quiet, the number will have an amazing crescendo that slowly draws the audience in. Scar, what do you think of that? Scar? Oh, sorry. Mr. Scar is on vocal rest. He says his voice must be preserved. Oh, oh, of course. Um, well, before we continue, does anyone have any ideas they'd like to throw out? Yes. Neat. So, okay. So I did some research, and I realized that in previous movies, the big villain number... Oh, sorry, Shenzi. Antagonist number. We try to avoid the V word. It's a trigger word for Mr. Scar. Fine. The antagonist number. It's just the antagonist singing while his henchmen watch or sing backup. Uh, well, what if we mixed it up? Go on. Well, in the antagonist number... What if it became a big group number? It could become powerhouse. The villain antagonist seems unbeatable and inclusive to the people who are actually doing the dirty work. Scar, do you have anything to say to that? Mr. Michael, vocal rest, remember? Right. And uh, why stop there? I mean, what if instead of it being an antagonist song, we made it a henchman ballad? Oh? Hear me out. The henchmen can sing a song about how they became workers for Scar and the troubles they faced. Because otherwise, you never really learn about the henchmen, and it could really add to the complexity of the story, I think. Fascinating. So Scar doesn't sing it at all? Correct. How dare you! Scar, your voice! I don't care! What do you mean Scar doesn't sing? Everyone knows the antagonist song is the best part of the movie. Look at poor unfortunate souls. Oh, please. As if you're ever going to be able to be Ursula. Save, save yourself from embarrassing yourself. Besides, this could be an original way to introduce the vi <clears throat> antagonist, not some copycat version of something that's already perfect. You know what? was perfect about Ursula's song, her henchmen never spoke. That is a sign of respect, something you could take a few courses in. Uh, you are such a diva. What? Whoa, whoa, let's calm down. First of all, we are a family. We will treat each other as such. Second of all, Scar's right. He needs to sing in the number, right? Right, moving on. Uh, I had some ideas about placement during the song. There will be three ledges with different heights. Scar will be on top, 
Ed, Shenzi, and Banzai will be on the second, and the extras will be on the bottom. How does that sound? Well, I think we should be at the top, and then Scar on the second. I mean, he should be in the center, since he's the star. That's ridiculous! You should be looking up to me! I would never put any pressure on my neck to look at your hideous face! Well, I'm not the one who's named after the nasty mark on his face. It is my trademark. Either way, you should invest in some Mederma. Michael, I will not be talked down to like this. If this continues, I will quit. Well, um, you already signed a contract, Mr. Scar. <laughs> but I do hear you. Um, okay, here's what we will do. Scar, you will start on the ground, but throughout the song, you will go up the levels and end at the top. Fine! See, Crescendo makes everything better. Wait, so Zazu gets to sing, and even Puma gets to sing, but we don't? Luck of the talent, I guess. No, 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 let's see. All right, here's what we'll do. No one should upstage Scar. Precisely. But... Throughout the song, there will be banter between Scar and his three main henchmen. I'm sure you two can pull off banter. That sounds perfect, Mr. Michael. Shenzi? I guess. Ed? <laughs> Ed says yes. Scar? Fine, but uh, in the sequel, I want a ballad. Sequel? Wait, Scar, you do know that you get attacked and then you die. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, nice job, everyone. I have to leave right at three. Bell and Beast have two left feet and need a little extra practice. Good work today. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in and watching uh, the inaugural episode of TBD Fort Hunt's uh, new teen sketch comedy show. Uh, it, was, it was great fun doing this uh, with all the kids. Uh, and uh, thank you to Feisty, uh, Fort, Hunt's fighting, Fort Hunt University's Fighting Squirrel, for joining us. And I'll leave you with a word from uh, Ella and Savannah, the show's co-producers. And thanks for watching. Okay, and that's a wrap on TVD. We want to thank everybody who watched, participated, and helped us along the way. Thank you, guys.